Hello, I'm JW. This time another item that's been sent in. This one comes from Brendan in Ireland. And it's this uh, power saving box. Now, uh, these things, uh, you can buy equivalent to these now from China, which are also called power saving boxes, generally in a plastic case. But this is a moderately older one. And you see it comes in this steel enclosure. And you'll see there's the uh, ventilation slots inside. And notably, you can see all the way through it. So uh, there's not actually going to be a huge amount of stuff in this. And it comes with a lead here where a plug, of course, would have been attached. So let's have a closer look at this and also see why these things were a complete waste of time and would, of course, actually save nothing. Here's the email for this one. And uh, it's another one of these that uh, claims it can save huge amounts from your electricity bill, 40% in this case. And uh, obviously it doesn't actually save anything at all. It's a complete load of old rubbish. So I've uh, got a couple of pictures there which were on the email, but uh, obviously we do have the uh, device itself here now. So here it is, and it's got a load of text on the front here which uh, claims to explain how the thing actually works. And uh, as we just saw there, you can actually see right through it. So uh, there's not a whole lot of stuff inside, if anything. And it's got these uh, void if removed tamper-proof seals here. Because of course they don't want you to be uh, looking inside to seeing just what is actually in there. Got a switch on the end there, presumably for on and off, although it seems kind of pointless because you're going to plug it in and leave it on. It's approved by Diane on the 17th of December 2008. And uh, on this end there's a fuse, and it's got the mains lead going in, so uh, not a whole lot to it. There's also a hole on the bottom here which has been cut out for a slide switch, but it hasn't actually been used. And a couple of other holes for purposes unknown, so uh, that's the thing. So first we've got instructions here, so plug the unit into any available power socket, slide the power switch to turn the unit to on. Again, that seems kind of pointless even having the switch because you're just going to plug it in anyway. Power lights will indicate the unit is working. Leave power saver unattended in a dry, temperate area, making sure that the unit's ventilation areas are unobstructed, implying it gives off piles of heat and therefore is actually going to waste energy rather than save it. Now technical specifications for whatever they're worth. 3,500 kilowatt hours, well that's just meaningless. Rate of voltage 90 to 240, well that's pretty much everywhere. Frequency 50 or 60, again that's pretty much everywhere. And temperature minus 10 to plus 60 degrees centigrade. So all that's just generic uh, meaningless tripe. Now uh, this bit here is quite interesting, safety warning. This device uses and retains electrical current and is used at the owner's risk. Keep this device away from children, animals, liquids and temperatures outside of its functional range. When removing the power saver, be aware that current is stored internally, so wait at least 30 seconds before turning off the power and removing the plug. So uh, basically it's going to have a massive capacitor inside, which if you uh, just unplugged it and poked the end of the wires, it's going to give you a big shock. So that's a pretty poor design. And as for using it at owner's risk, some kind of attempt to uh, disclaim liability when this thing sets your house on fire. So uh, pretty poor there. But of course the uh, mess continues with what we've got at the bottom here, the science of power saving. So this claims to explain how this contrivance actually works. Notice it's got a coffee ring on the top here, so it uh, gives you the uh, idea of what kind of credibility people attach to this device wherever it was used. So in a normal electrical system, power does not flow smoothly, and there are numerous spikes which your wires cannot accommodate. These spikes create heat and therefore energy loss, your power save device stores and distributes your electricity in a more stable manner, eliminating those wasteful spikes in your circuits. Well, this is also tripe, of course, because uh, this is on an AC system, so of course it doesn't flow smoothly. It's changing all the time. I've got a couple of useless graphs here. So before installing, you've got these little spikes on the AC sine wave, and after installing it, magically smooths them all out. And then for some reason over here we've also got one that shows DC, which does the same thing. But uh, obviously this isn't designed for DC, so not too clear why that's even on there. So the power saver unit 8. Now what happened to 9? I don't know, because it was 9 at the top. But uh, anyway, the power saver unit 8 is distributed exclusively by plugandsave.com, which is part of the True Potential Group Incorporated, business number and so on. And you may contact them through their website at uh, plugandsave.com. Well, you can't, because if you go there, it's just some defunct, uh, spammed away mess. So they're gone, and obviously the email address is gone as well. We provide power saver units worldwide for both retail and wholesale customers, or more like they did, because they don't exist anymore. And then we've got this 40% saving uh, claim here, and then this true pot thing here, whatever that's supposed to mean. So uh, there we have it. 
all properly explained and uh, really doesn't say anything at all because of course uh, it's 100% junk. Now let's have a look at the thing itself and we're going to start with this power lead. There's no plug supplied here but obviously it had something attached got the sort of mark there where the flex grip would have been. But uh, let's just cut into that and just see what we've got inside because uh, this, uh, as you may have spotted already, isn't what you would expect for something that was sold either in Europe or in Ireland or anywhere else for that matter. So uh, let's just pry this open. So it's a three core flex, which is kind of what you'd expect with a metal case appliance. And inside we have the uh, green and yellow for the earth connection. And then the other two are white and black. Now white and black are the colours you'd use in North America. So presumably this model wasn't intended for use over here. Quite how it ended up in Ireland, of course, is anybody's guess. But uh, nevertheless, there we go. So white, black and the uh, earth conductor. The flex itself is this grey stuff doesn't uh, look too bad, but uh, who really cares because it's not going to work anyhow. Here's the markings on the flex, so it's a KSC 33 of 4, and it's a 3 core 0.75mm squared, and it's a Dong brand 2003. So back to the main device, it's got these do not tamper with seal, so we'll just uh, bust through those immediately, because uh, of course that's completely and utterly useless, so void if removed, but say so bearing in mind the company went out of business doesn't really uh, matter in the slightest. It's very sad that companies have to put things like that on their equipment because ultimately uh, if you're going to open it, well, uh, so what? I mean, uh, what difference is it actually going to make? So just four screws holding the case together. This looks like a fairly generic case you can just buy off the shelf from uh, pretty much anywhere, so probably not specific to this application. So that's what we've got inside. So that's the case, just the lid there with the uh, massive ventilation slots. And inside we can see uh, various components here, and it's also been potted, scammer's favourite, to uh, attempt to cover up what's actually in there. But it uh, hasn't actually worked all that well because uh, they've only put a relatively small amount in. So mains lead coming in at the bottom here. See there's at least one wire going across and uh, two going around the back. This is the uh, fuse holder here. So just have a look in there, see what we've got. Yes, piddly little glass fuse. Not going to do a whole lot. I probably can't see it on the camera, but it's a 5 amp fuse, so uh, there you go. No doubt to do with the massive surge when it's uh, switched on initially. So we'll just shove that back in there for now. Now there's your power switch on the back, so it's just going to be a single pole on and off arrangement, so uh, nothing too mysterious with that. Let's have this uh, cable tie away from there, so we'll uh, get rid of it. Now, although it's potted, we've obviously got at least one lead here just coming straight through and uh, it's a potting compound coming off. And then the fuse holder there, main switch on the back to literally just turn it on and off. Got a little thing on the back here, which is probably going to be an LED with the two wires coming down there. Big lump there, which almost certainly is going to be a capacitor of some kind. And it's fairly typical of the uh, sort of things you see in those Chinesey ones. And then the other components here, some kind of inductor there. And then something else there, which uh, could well be just another capacitor of some kind. And so this potting compound is fairly hard. Yep, it's just been put in there just to uh, basically prevent people from seeing the magic secret gubbins that's contained within. Yeah, pretty much the whole thing is just uh, literally potted in there. So all we're going to have in here basically is a large capacitor along the lines of the Chinese ones. And they've covered a couple of other bits in there. So a uh, inductor and a little uh, extra capacitor as well. But uh, LED lights on the back there fixed in with hot glue and the wires just tacked across. Pretty much shines through the hole here. Switch is entirely redundant as is the actual indicator there. And the only way that this theoretically could work is if you had an installation with a large amount of inductive load, so it's going to be things like electric motors mainly, then in theory adding a capacitor in would correct the power factor. And if you actually build for that, then that could make a small difference. However, the problem is that in domestic properties, and in fact most uh, commercial ones, it doesn't actually build that way anyhow, so whether the power factor is poor or good makes no difference to what you actually pay. And the other big problem is that most loads in installations are not highly inductive, and even if they were, 
you can't just shove a random capacitor on there. If you want to do power factor correction with capacitors, they have to be carefully matched to the loads that you've actually got. So uh, just shoving in some random value will achieve nothing. And even if you're going to go down that route, power factor correction capacitors are not this size in most cases. If you're going to have, a, say, a big factory full of motors, power factor correction capacitors, each one would be the size of this box and above, and there will be whole banks of the things installed on the intake room. So uh, really, the grain of truth in there about power factor correction is true, but of course, in reality, this device will do absolutely nothing, and uh, it will obviously just waste a bit of power from the actual LED indicator there. And as for all this uh, excessive amount of uh, ventilation, well, completely unnecessary because... So this won't actually really use any power at all. Now I'm not going to get into this potting because it is the hardest and most uh, indestructible kind they could have possibly used. So basically if you come across any items that are completely potted like this, it's scammer's choice because uh, they just won't want to see what's in there. And in reality, of course, what's in there is a load of nothing. It's just going to be a little board with those on capacitor and the various wires which have uh, sunk in there. And the other thing you'll find these in, in this potting arrangement typically, are those devices which claim to reduce scale on your water system, usually in curve with a small box, wires that go around the water pipe, and then it magically puts out some kind of special signals onto the water pipe which uh, prevents scale from forming, but uh, they work as well as this thing does. And uh, yeah, as you see there, it's just completely... Uh, stuck in there, so that definitely won't be coming out. Now, although we can't see inside, we can do a couple of checks here just to uh, confirm what we know already. Let's just see if the earth is connected to the metal casing. It certainly should be, although uh, given the potted construction, who knows? So let's pop around to there. Connected there. Well, there you go. I know it's not, so uh, that's a big fail, isn't it? So a metal case appliance, and there's zero connection to the actual casement there. So, yeah, that's a bit poor. Of course, we can't really see where the wires actually go, but uh, that's obviously the uh, green and yellow one on the side there. Seems to go around into there somewhere, but uh, obviously it doesn't meet with the uh, completely on the circuit board to the actual casing. So, yeah, that's a bit of a fail. Let's just check we don't have any continuity between there and the rest. Well, unsurprisingly not. You wouldn't expect there to be. So yeah, the earth is completely unconnected, so that would already be a fail. Let's just see what we've got between these. In fact, let's just see what we've got between these and the case, because you never know what goes on on these things. So, Well, nothing there, so at least it's not uh, shorting the live conductors to the casing. Now, in terms of what's between the two other conductors, we should find that there's either a capacitor there, or there might be a resistor, depending on uh, what kind of mess they've got in there. Given that warning on the case, it uh, probably isn't a resistor, because uh, otherwise it wouldn't have had that warning about shocking yourself once it had charged up. So, uh, let's see what we've got there. And the answer is uh, pretty much nothing, so uh, not very promising. Is there any kind of capacitance there? Well, the answer is no, because it appears to be completely open, so uh, that's not a very good start, is it? Let's just check that the uh, switch is actually working. Well, no, it doesn't seem to make a difference on either of them. And uh, go back to resistance there, so completely open. And it's completely open, so a bit of a fail, isn't it? Maybe it's already failed before we uh, actually got here. Now... Uh, just check that the fuse is actually intact. It didn't look broken. But yeah, well, that's fine. And what about the switch here? Well, that's in the off position. That's in the on position. So, uh, yes, that certainly works. There's one of your incoming leads. goes straight to the switch, goes back to the fuse. And then, of course, it just goes down into the thing under there. So... Uh, yeah, it seems to be totally open and therefore totally non-functional. Well, the only thing that works here is the uh, thing at the end there. So uh, we just connect that across there. We've got uh, 1.3 volts across that indicator or whatever it is in that direction. And if we go to the other direction, we basically get a load of nothing. So, uh, yes, presumably one of the leads inside is not connected or 
presumably doesn't do anything at the voltages this meter can supply. So uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty mediocre. Certainly uh, not what you would expect to find. But uh, in any case, it wouldn't have worked anyhow because let's face it, there's nothing in there to actually uh, do anything anyway. Now, as it doesn't obviously work, let's just go in as far as we can, see what we've got here. So uh, just cut off the uh, fuse holder there and uh, got rid of the switch from the back as well. That just uh, pulls away, so that looks like just a little LED or something in there. Hot glued onto the back That's before the resin is tipped in. It's the mains lead just coming in the bottom there, so again, nothing uh, too surprising with that. And we've got the whole rest of it is this uh, mass of uh, cast resin, so. Uh, Pry under there. And in case you're wondering, no, me prying the edge has not damaged this whole closet to disconnect because this resin is so incredibly hard that it doesn't actually bend, so uh, we haven't actually uh, damaged anything that's inside. It's purely the case that uh, it's either broken or uh, never worked in the first place. So, Let's see what we've got here. Right, well there we go, so there's a load of brown packing tape in the bottom, so that's always a sign of quality manufacturer. How disgusting. And you can see that there could be no earth connection to this whatsoever, simply the fact that this brown tape exists here. Now we can see on the bottom here what that component is. It's obviously a capacitor, CBB61, 5 microfarads, plus minus 5%, 400 volts AC. So uh, bugger all basically in terms of capacitance, but then say because of its tiny size, and we can see the back of what is obviously a circuit board at the top here. And so there's obviously no connection here whatsoever to the uh, metal case. So uh, there was never an earth connection on this and uh, neither was there ever intended to be. That obviously circuit board was just uh, blobbed down there with a bit of hot glue onto the bottom. And uh, likewise with the capacitor there, that should be reasonably soft here. Yeah. So that's literally just a bit of hot glue. There it is, just to tack the components onto this brown tape. And then of course the resin is just poured over after the event. So uh, yeah, that's the same material there. Again, fairly soft. So uh, most of this is actually just going to be empty. It's just going to be the capacitor, little tiny circuit board in the middle, one of which has uh, a few little wires there. The rest of it is going to be largely a load of junk. So uh, that basically is the circuit board there. That's the 5 microfarad capacitor. And then we've just got a few wires which happen to uh, glue down into the material. Orange ones there for the LED, of course, from the bottom. And that is pretty much it. Now what I'll do, I think I'll just try and uh, see if we can just chip away some of this uh, black resin here, because we can at least see the bottom of the circuit board there. It's not going to be much bigger than the actual size of what we've got there, because uh, it's only got these a couple of components on it. So uh, I think we'll see if we're going to chip into that and uh, at least get some idea of what's going on in there. And so we might as well because uh, as we've taken it out this far we may as well uh, continue. Now a few uh, smashings later and this is what we've got. So uh, capacitor there we saw earlier, five microfarads, nothing special there just to stand off the shelf job. Going to do next to nothing for anything. And two leads from that, just this uh, black one here and the other black one there. One black goes onto the circuit board, and the other black one uh, obviously was connected to the other side. And uh, in terms of why it wasn't anything between the black and white wires, it's fairly obvious now that we've got it out. The white one's been cut off here, so all we've got is something between black and the green and yellow, which should of course be the earth. Earth goes down to the circuit board, as does the uh, other side of that uh, capacitor lead, and then this one is basically what went over to the switch and the fuse. And uh, if you think that's your sort of mains input there, basically it's just this capacitor directly across between black and the earth. And if that was in North America, that would be between the black, which is the hot, or the line, as it would be over here, and earth, and then the white would be the neutral. Now this white one, uh, say, was not connected to the 
white in there. It was actually just on the circuit board. It actually ripped off of the pad over that side there. And essentially then this went over to the other side of the fuse holder as well, as there were two wires on there. Basically one of which was from this capacitor, the other one was this white one going onto the lead. So in its basic form it's essentially just this capacitor stuck between the active or hot and the actual earth, which is of course completely useless. Let's just remove that uh, from the situation. Two orange wires there go up to that uh, little indicator there for the supposed power indication. And then the uh, one here was actually on the circuit board just like that. So again all you've got there is basically your uh, one lead here and the other lead here which was connected directly via that one. Now here's the circuit board or the back of it. The top has that inductor, that thing there which is probably a capacitor and two little blue items which are more than likely just little uh, capacitors or something. There may be something else under there but it's going to be very low profile, possibly a resistor or something. Unfortunately if we take this off it's going to crack and fracture so we'll have a look at it first. But uh, essentially what we've got here is the supply, essentially is applied between this white wire over here and then the earth connection over that side and that's where the other capacitor of course attached to. You can see that the indicator here, one side of it, is connected directly to that. So that's some sort of common uh, ground or negative over there. So that's one side of it. And the other side of the indicator goes down here to whatever is on the other side of that. And it's notable that these pads here are not soldered, so though there are positions for components on these, there actually aren't anything there because there's no pins and there's no solder either. So all of these gold-coloured pads can be completely disregarded. So all we've got on the top is basically where these little blobs of solder are located, excluding of course these things that we've got uh, on the bottom. So whatever that track there was isn't doing anything at all, so there's presumably a 3-pin device supposed to go there, but again that's not uh, doing anything, it's unpopulated. We've got something here between the middle and then something else in the middle there, and if you look on the back it's that uh, probable capacitor type device, which fairly obviously goes across to the negative over that side. And then this inductor here, which is almost certainly going to be these two, again it's just going to be between the uh, one side of the supply and the other, so we've basically got supply coming in via that inductor, via a capacitor over to the uh, negative or common ground. These pins here are going to be those blue objects there. As I guess I'm going to say those are highly likely to be capacitors as well because as before it's between the incoming supply, it just jumps across, they're linked together and then it goes over again to the uh, common rail on the other side. And uh, that unfortunately is pretty much it. So we can discount any components over here because obviously it hasn't got any. And then this thing here is some sort of indicator now. As we saw one side is directly onto the uh, ground or the common rail there. And then the other one is here. So there may be something on the top there probably between here and here. So jumping that across to that and that's more than likely going to be a resistor and that's going to be in there somewhere. So it's just literally across the supply of the resistor to limit the current. And this is almost certainly going to be an LED. So uh, all we got then basically is moderate size capacitor across the supply, which allegedly does the function of it. No bleed resistor, of course, which is why I had that uh, warning about killing yourself on the cover. And then uh, indicator of some kind with probably a resistor there. A couple of capacitors there stuck across the supply again and a bigger capacitor again just stuck across the supply as well for reasons unknown and a little inductor in series with that some kind of sort of filter maybe and that is it so uh, basically a big pile of nothing that's not going to save money and there's no uh, magic or science included now because we can we may as well just pry under here and see if we can identify the remnants of a resistor so unfortunately this is going to cause breakage and damage but then uh, we already knew that didn't we so go in there and see what we've got. So there we have it. So uh, that has come cleanly away. Yeah, there was a pin there, it seemed lined up with that uh, piece there and obviously uh, the other one there is basically going to be underneath the other one. So almost certainly going to be a resistor there with the two pins. The rest of the components of course are on the top of the board. We can already see those. Now let's see what we've uh, really got. So here's the 
busted off piece, all that's got on are the two wires for the indicator, and there's the other couple of wires which run off to the basically the supply on one side of the capacitor. Other components, of course, unpopulated as we already knew. So uh, there are the pins in here left from where the actual uh, alleged resistor is going to be. So if we just go in there, and these were of course uh, in series with that indicator, so what have we got there? 180k resistor. Again, that's pretty uh, obvious and straightforward for that. So that's uh, almost certainly going to be an LED of some kind, just a resistor shoved them directly across the mains. And then we have the rest of these. Now, these two pins here should go to that inductor, and I've actually cut through all the tracks here, so we can just measure one at a time, regardless of uh, secret potting compounds. So this doesn't measure inductance, but um, yeah, 0.2 ohms, so basically a dead short. So that's just that uh, inductor on the top side there. So we don't have an inductance meter here, but it uh, doesn't really matter. Now these two blue jobs are this one, which measures open, so almost certainly a capacitor. And this one, yeah, which measures open, so bound to be a capacitor. So we'll just go to the uh, capacitance uh, option there, and then we can measure here. 5 nanofarad, and this one... 5 nanofarads as well. So basically that is just two 5 nanofarad capacitors stuck uh, between the well earth and uh, line in this case. And then the other thing was that bigger capacitor which is going to be these two pins here or that yellow box type of thing. And again we can just uh, go in there and we can see that's around 44 nanofarads so uh, that's just another capacitor. And we can do that in the other direction that will give us the same result. So there we are, 45 nanofarad or whatever across there, a couple of 5 nanofarads across those, a little tiny inductor in the sort of uh, micro Henry's range probably, and uh, a uh, little resistor there for the LED indicator. Now quite why they went to the bother of this isn't clear, particularly if they're going to pot it in resin. I mean, who needs the capacitors there? All it's going to do is, in theory, a tiny amount of filtering across the line, but... Uh, so tiny as to be uh, completely insignificant and mostly irrelevant, but nevertheless they've uh, put it in. And as for the rest of the components which were supposed to be on there, obviously uh, they were not populated, and uh, so there's room for a three-pin device there and a few other bits, but uh, no solder there, so again they didn't even exist, so really don't know why they bothered. The only other possible explanation if they really assumed somebody was going to get an x-ray machine out and uh, do an x-ray through it would have shown slightly more complicated circuitry but uh, really who's going to be bothered with that. Now of course the only thing remaining is what is this thing? Almost certainly going to be an LED so uh, just connect up the wires here and we'll uh, put the power supply say around 3 volts and we'll limit the current to a region of sort of 10 milliamps or something. So uh, let's see what we get and uh, just turn on the uh, power there then there it is illuminating it may be a bit difficult to see, but uh, basically it's a red one, so uh, just a red LED, 1.9 volts, and uh, just drawing that about 7 milliamps there. Could possibly nudge that up a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's just basically a red LED. So there we have it then, that's what's inside this piece of junk. Pretty much nothing at all other than a capacitor, and a few other spurious components which do next to nothing, and at best it's going to... Uh, waste away a bit of power. At worst it's going to do nothing at all and say in most situations even if it did uh, manage to make a small correction to the power factor of the installation it's not really going to matter because most installations aren't actually metered for that anyhow. So there we go. So that's it with this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.